Hello there everyone and thank you for rejoining me here in Kaiser Redux and we're playing as of course the kingdom of France uh, but we've got to talk about a new anthem La Marseille uh, oh god La Marseille has been the national anthem of France since 1979 and I apologize for mispronouncing it it was composed in 1970, 1792 by Claude Joseph Rouget de Lille, uh, Lille for volunteers heading out to fight Prussian and Austrian armies. With the victory of the revolutionary forces, the song became immortal. Incredibly popular, the song is undoubtedly a republican symbol. However, the fate of La Marseille is something dissension among even, our, even, our, even among our partisans. Many have no issue with the song, including Maros himself, much like few issues. Uh, people have with a uh, tricolor. It's accompanied Frenchmen in some of the most glorious moments of the last century, and its lyrics could easily be understood as more broadly patriotic than Republican. On the other hand, a minority desires a total rejection of anything brought by the revolution, arguing that we cannot fight one revolution with the embers of the previous ones to still burn. As such, they demand the reintroduction of the anthem instead following the fall of the imposter Bonaparte, uh, Le Rotor des Princes Francais à Paris. Based on the melody of the popular song Viva le Roi Henri, a uh, compromise has also been proposed. The armies of the counter revolution had themselves adopted a modified version of the song called La Marseille des Blancs, the Marseille of the Whites, with radically different lyrics, which could satisfy everyone. After all, it would be a shame to such, such a strange melody. Hmm. We can do the modified version. You know, we can modify, we can still get political power, we'll get mic up that stability later, and we're here having a good time in Carlos Spain, well maybe not so much Carlos Spain, but we're doing okay in the U.S. government area. Um, yeah, we'll see what happens down and around here. If they want to attack, great, let them attack. Let us get all that XP and soak it up. Um, they just really not having a good time over here. But we're doing all right, and that's what really matters. We are doing okay, so. Um, it's 1938, February, and we're finishing localist ideals. And we really gotta get ready for uh, the war, so. Empire of the Camelot, if you're doing this again, please go ahead. Boop. And uh, break the four estates, or work with Abbas. Let's break the four estates. Maras has long identified the fundamental enemies of our civilization, the anti-France, as being formed of four confederate estates, namely Protestant, Jews, Freemasons, and immigrants, or to use ancient in an th Athenian term, metics. These four subversive elements have undermined France for centuries, spreading any number of insidious ideologies and enslaving the common Frenchmen. It is time to finally break up their influence if we are to ever have a chance of liberating France in an aristocratic restoration. The French aristocracy, in spite of its long and proud history, have long been humiliated and repressed by the Republic. However, this can go on no longer. The aristocracy has played a vital role to, uh, to play with the, in Maurras's ideal of an orderly, hierarchical society. And French aristocrats are almost universally monarchist, and generally sympathetic to the AF as such. The government is set about restoring legal recognition of aristocratic titles, and with it, they're restoring the French period to ensure loyal and organic government. Let the nobility resume its good work for the nation. I'm going to lower this too, because we need to buy more guns. And the Eid, if you want to buy that, please go ahead. Very nice, very nice, very nice. How much artillery do we have? We have seven. Safe de excellence francais. With tensions escalating and give across even further, it's hardly surprising that the popular culture in our country would reflect, reflect that fact. Indeed, the latest song to top the charts from France is called They Make Excellent Frenchmen, performed by Maurice Chevalier, star of the musical comedy and kingpin of French show business. The song lists all the characteristics of a group of soldiers and officers, all coming from different walks of life, all in different occupations, many middle-aged and with families of their own, of differing faiths, races, and political opinions, all with their own little ailments, and yet, as the chorus states, all of them make excellent Frenchmen excellent soldiers. Catching comedic. As the song's underlying call for unity as their nation is faced with its greatest struggle yet and its exaltation of the French infantrymen, always ready to leave everything behind and forget himself in the fight to defend his motherland that has made its immense success. A nation where everything is mobilized for the coming war effort like ours. Uh, each and every one of us can identify with being the sentiment. We will fight and we will win because we must retake our home. They march in step, they're no longer used to it, but it's like riding a bicycle you never forget. Uh, you gotta try to take these. You can probably do that and help them out there. Look at that political power. Very nice. Um, we definitely probably want to get with these guys. So what's next? I do want to build faster. Air Force, Army Command, Entrenchment is nice. I wouldn't mind more breakthrough. We're going to be using quite a bit of infantry. What about air? 
No, that's not fair. Because air support would be nice. Air attack and defense. Experience. It would give us more daily air XP, which I do like. But I want to do more army XP too. Speed. Um, I want to go with breakthrough. We're going to need quite a bit of breakthrough, aren't we? I guess I would assume so. Alright, so with that in mind, we're going to make these and throw on another artillery. So now we're definitely going to buy even more artillery. Boom. Anything else here? Nope. And we're going to trade it for another fuel, too. Um... Learning how much we have here, but that's alright. Thank you, Sardinia. Yeah, you guys can come over here. I feel like you could use that help. Nah, we're good. And how are we doing over here? You guys are just getting whacked really, really hard. Anything here, maybe? What do we got here? Ah. Yes. Purpose of Camelot's Du Roy. Now that we resolve to deepen the role of the Camelot's Du Roy within the government, we must settle on a clear purpose for the movement. So far, under Maurice Peugeot, the Camelots have formerly, uh, have formerly been considered a youth group, but in practice have more closely resembled a political paramilitary. With young men of the organization, often engaging in street fights with members of opposing parties and protecting AF politicians. Many now believe that such an organization is vital for the government to hold on to power, but others believe that reforming to a genuine youth group would also be a successful policy. Due to the loyalty of the next generation, reforming to a youth movement, opposition still threat, keep it as is. I like into the youth movement. I think that's a good idea. I think it's a very good idea, actually. So much already we out. 800 pieces, that's a lot of already. I mean, you could probably help them out. They're expanding too fast and hard without enough resources, but whatever. I do want to finish the city, though. For catapults, nice. Should be fine. Power of the Camelots. Good, good, good. Break the four states. Um, attacking them might be a mistake. Smash high finance. Get more civics. I do like that. As much as I like this, this is nothing more important. Uh, if France were to be truly independent, it must be free. It's, it must free itself from the shackles of rootless finance, with all its corruption, subversion, and Jewish influence. Even today, the bankers at the top are growing fat while decent Frenchmen toil in poverty. This can go on no longer, and it's time for the step to step in and break up corrupt foreign and Jewish businesses. An offer from Delonical. With more moderate royal sympathizers such as de Gaulle increasingly sidelined, we have been approached with a new offer of collaboration from Eugene de Delonical. A former member of the Action Francais who became disillusioned with Maurras's inaction in the years before we came to power, and who grew more sympathetic to newer nationalist ideals pre prevalent in Italy, Romania, Russia, and elsewhere. Now, however, de Lonical, appears enthusiastic at the death of the Republic and restoration of the monarchy, and in spite of his differences, is willing to work with the government. He does indeed appear to have a lot to offer us. He seemingly has a contact throughout the military and intelligence services, and many like money loss willing to aid him. In exchange for some political influence and concessions, he claims he will be able to use his connections to pacify what remains of the opposition and even infiltrate the commune. Hmm. Former member. Hmm, okay. The Night Monks of the Saint Saint Croix. On the heights above the Oran, since a citadel built centuries ago by the Spaniards at the fort of Saint Croix, taken over and restored after the conquest of Algeria. The fort was until recently a secondary garrison. However, the sleepy citadel has been bustling with activity for the last few months. A school was created there by the regime to educate the future elites of the nation. Under the leadership of uh, Lieutenant Pierre Dunoyer de Segonzac, a young and fiery officer, and René de Narroy, a military chaplain beloved by his men, the National School of Cadres of Iran created an innovative six-month curriculum to shape hundreds of the brightest youths and of the nation into world leaders worthy of serving France. With strict discipline, exemplary morality, strenuous physical exercise, inspired by scoutism and military training, long hours of study, and a deep sense of camaraderie, Lieutenant Donoyer de uh, Segonzac hopes to create a new man entirely dedicated to the national interests. Interestingly, the students in the retreat between sea and sky began to shape the spirit of the school themselves, nicknaming Duyona de Segonzac, Old Chief, 
Though the man is barely 30, they have set him themselves as a knightly order with a motto and coat of arms swearing an oath of France and the comrades. A development embraced by the direction of the school as the romantic image of the school brings ever more members and volunteers. However, St. Croix's independence is worrying some within the government, while they consider the school to be slowly but surely into a personality cult around the old chief. If it's not a cult, plain and simple, given the increasingly mystical Catholic devotion fostered by Padre du Nori, what should be done? Encourage the night monks? Shut down the school, our best and brightest will not be turned into cultists. Mm. I think this is probably the best one. Shut it down. Sorry, kids, can't have your fun today. Maybe next time. I like how they're finishing up here, but they really need to finish up here before they go on the offensive. The future of immigration. The Action Francais has always staunchly opposed immigration, identifying unassimilated immigrants, or in Athenian terminology, metics, as one of the four Confederate states of the anti France. However, the party is now divided around exactly to solve the problem of immigration. One proposal, inspired by Ross's emphasis on Mediterranean civilization, is to restrict immigration to those from Latin countries. On the other hand, some within the government believe we should ignore national origin, provided that all immigrants are made to assimilate into French culture, and only small numbers are taken in. Others be my one and, and immigration all right. <clears throat> Limited, managed numbers, and assimilation would be fine. Zero immigration. We wanted the biggest party possible. Or biggest military possible. You know what? We don't need immigration. You know why? Because we're not having people migrate to us. They're going to come and assimilate to us. <clears throat> I mean, the borders look nice now, but still. People are finding it's good. So here is pushing to the west. <clears throat> Excuse me. Um, which one do we want next? We do want better engineers. It's always good. Uh, anything for here? Anti tank? I'll grab some of that just in case. And it's a lot of time. But I'm okay with that. The fate of the Protestant missionaries. Protestantism. Oh boy. The religion of the German filth, in a front of the essentially Latin hierarchies of the Catholic Church, has long been identified as a key part of the anti France by Moras, thankfully. The African territories have no substantial Protestant population, which could threaten a government, but there are nonetheless many Protestant missionaries, especially in the sub Saharan colonies. Although many want us to stamp out these seditious preachers, lest they turn the natives against us, many of the missionaries are Anglicans, supported by English and Canadian allies, so some are urging us to pragmatically leave them be, lest the Entente Cordale is strained unduly. Thrown us to the Canadians. They need our ships and troops more than a few priests. <coughs> Oops, my finger slipped. Build. We do what we want. Come back to Freemasonry. Freemasonry is a highly secretive international network which stands opposed to the classical ideas of Action Francais. No. Have always drawn the Potter's iron, is identified by Moras as one of the four estates of the anti France. Um, it goes without saying the town's coming to shut down. The Masonic lodges around our territory and have banned the practice. Many, of course, would like to go still further and take this opportunity to round up any known Freemasons, as well as uncovering those who have kept their affiliations hidden. Many have associated with or supported liberal movements, and with Masonry banned, none of them will sympathize with us now. Others, however, argue that such an operation would be extremely costly, and so it's possible that we could simply fail to find much evidence against them. Round up. And expose others. Yeah, okay, why not? We need to probably go to extensive at the very least. Red flood, if you want to put that, please go ahead. Real corporatism, which I'll probably grab next. Um, the unrestrained capitalism of today is destructive to regional liberty and to traditional values, and is vital that we take a stance against it. However, socialism is an equally negative system. And we must seek an alternative to reorganize the economy to state controlled corporations. Um, with the economy under state supervision, we will be able to proactively ready it for the liberation and break what remains of foreign influence. The uh, Crimo decree repeal. Now that we've largely dealt with France's other enemies, <clears throat> we can turn to what many view as the most insidious of all our foes. Of course, the Jews we're talking about here. Because why wouldn't we talk about them? 
Uh, the Action France came, to admit, uh, came into being amidst the Dreyfus affair, and Morasso's ideology has always criticized the influence over France and Algeria, meanwhile. All Jews have been French citizens for decades now, something that has consistently drawn anger and resentment from the natives. But no more. Today, His Majesty formally repealed the Cromwell Decree, which first granted citizenship to the Jews of Africa. Uh, Algeria. Basically, same thing. Natives around the country have had celebrated the news, and Morasso's allies in France, Ferhat Abbas's AF inspired Action Algerian, have congratulated the government and promised to redouble their efforts to improve cooperation between Arabs and Frenchmen. Excellent news. Can you guys get over here at all? No, okay. Uh, can you guys get over here at all? Yes, you can. Maybe we get some real XP here. Algerian Muslim Scouts. In 1935, a scouting troop for the Muslim bo boys was created by Mohamed Boras, supported by reformist ulemas, traditional elites, and a foreign minded Frenchman, all hoping that scouting would promote physical and moral education, character building, and a sense of responsibility, as well as duty to Allah and the motherland. Hundreds of troops have been created since proving popular among all classes, as many young boys and teenagers flock to them, drawn by promises of adventure, a sense of belonging, as well as dashing uniforms with red and green bandanas. Drawn from Lord Bottom Powell's books, the boys learned how to camp, survive, sing songs, and participate in religious ceremonies like Eid or Maulid, where they parade in uniform, and the groups even organizing mass kitan. Circumcision of boys around seven years old, an occasion of much celebration that poor families could otherwise cannot afford. However, these groups have remained largely isolated from each other, merely sharing values of flagging in a uniform. As such representatives from the various troops have asked for the colonial administration, it's blessing to create a federation of Algerian Muslim scouts that would promote greater cooperation and uniformization of scouting practice among the indigenous. Already prominent native voices like Farhad Abbas and a diverse coalition of French reformists campaign for the official approval of such a federation, arguing that it would promote traditional values along with the loyalty to France, while some more conservative Pied Noirs argue that the Boy Scouts are groomed for red green jihad by the syndicalist agents of Missali Hajj that native scouting is a bad idea altogether and that the patrie they are loyal to is not France but Algeria. Where pragmatic voices in the government argue that given our approval of this federation will grant us much greater oversight of a largely autonomous initiative. More like prepare for insurrection ban these groups. Royalist youth camps. Over the last weeks, the Kem Left Du Roy have performed into a genuine youth movement. Um, with their more paramilitary members reassigned to growing secret police, and boys around the country enrolled. Now, youth camps are going to open up around the country, funded and supported by the state, of course. <clears throat> These institutions will teach the youth of the nation true moral values, along with the dedication to the king and respect for the hierarchies of society, an excellent initiative. And I'm going to move these guys up here. Uh, honestly, I want another arms factory. Oh well, I push you now. I'll be all fairing down here. If I were them, I'd concentrate forces where they really need to be concentrated. But uh, I'm not them, so. Alright, can we buy more arty? No, that's not very good from Japan, but we'll buy whatever we can and get. Alright, so that's the case. Um, I want to start bringing another one up here too, because uh, we, we, need, we need more planes. We really, 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 really need more planes. Give me your bike trucks later, you know. Ooh. Salamanca. Well, would you look at that? That's what I come in a circle to make. Guys, would you like to uh, hold and not give up? Pogroms in Algiers. Who could have seen that one coming? I know we didn't. Uh, in the aftermath of the repeal of the Crimea Decree, anti Semitic sentiment. And it has been galvanized in Algeria, both among Arab nationalists who have long resented the special treatment of Jews and Frenchmen as sympathetic to Morass's rhetoric. <clears throat> Although most Jews are now leaving the country for Germany, Palestine, or even the commune, those that are stayed are increasingly being attacked, uh, with anti Jewish demonstrations increasingly common. These are not saying any violence, something that the most integralists have little objection to, and thus many believe the government should endorse the demonstrations. However, some of the government are worried about international condemnation and thus urges to rein in the demonstrators before it grows out of hand. Encourage them. Put a lid on it before it becomes embarrassing. Hmm. 
Here you go. Confere Notre Dame. A wide network of informants within the commons already been integrated within our wider intelligence network in the Metropole and already provided us with crucial information regarding military installations and planning. Government had influence within our domain, dominion as those potential targets to bring over to our side or take down. Founded earlier this year by Louis de la Bardonne, a winemaker from Dorgon, and now headed by our smuggled agent Gabriel Renault, has operated the pseudonym of Colonel Remy. The network operates primarily in the west of France, recruiting mostly among the numerous Catholics disgruntled by the anti-clerical practices of the syndicalist government, including a high number of women such as Jeanette Guyot. As such, the deeply Catholic Colonel Remy has chosen for the network the codename CND, so short for Our Lady Confraternity. Hoping to put an effort of these heroes under the protection of the Virgin Mary. Good luck, Colonel. What else could we use here? Mm, torpedoes are always very good, too. Battleships. Eh, we get this one, too, I suppose, for now. You're going to lose probably territory down here, I assume. But if we move past over here, we should be okay. Boston. Welcome to Boston. Brazil wins World Cup. What else do you expect? That's a case. I think here we want. I'm not sure which one's the best one. Survey crews versus battlefield interdiction, ground attack, escort carriers, fighter detection. Just in case, centralized control will probably be best. Let's grab a doctrine. Battlefield support. Yeah. With all strong castes. Oh, we need this one too. Necessity of hierarchy. In truth, modern ideals of democracy and liberalism amount to little more than a tyranny of finance and mob rule, while socialist and most radical right wing states are even less subtle in their tyranny. The only state that can grant the people genuine freedom is a traditionalist one, built on a natural hierarchy with the king at the top, using necessary authority to guide his people without devolving into petty tyranny. It is such a state that we must build in France. Breaking up high finance, for too long, the rootless and corrupt agents of global finance have sought to enslave people around the world, separating them from faith, culture, and tradition. Now, however, we can put a stop to this today. By order of the king, the assets of countless prominent banks and non-French businessmen were seized. Now the state is, is in, control the, of the, in control of their wealth and business. We must decide what to do with them. Some believe that we should redistribute it to the loyal Frenchmen, while others argue that to prevent another spiral into corruption, the state must maintain control over these businesses and can spend the money on new projects. Ooh, that's good. I like that. Two more cities would be really beneficial. I, I agree more with the give it to patriotic Frenchmen. I think that's better overall. Um, but I could use the cities really badly right now, actually. So we have one here, and put another one there too. Because I forgot, I want to up continue upgrading uh, this one as well. Make sure the batteries. Um, you need some torpedoes. That's fine. Need some anti-sub stuff. I prefer guns, mine warfare, anti-air. Do we have anti-air already? Yeah, we have a little bit of anti-air. You know what? We're going to grab another thing of anti-air. Maybe? No. We need... Improved float planes. There you go. It's fine. Good enough. Good. Nine thirty-eight. Unless by one more, because I still want more of these. Uh, where can get more aluminum from? That's good. You want more planes? More, 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 more. The royal wedding. All right. Let's go on over here. How much artillery are we out? Five hundred some odd, huh? Well, Boston. Hey, look at that. Good job, guys. Machine's good. 39. Uh, fuel gain per oil. Yeah, we're going to do all the industrial stuff too. Second like Northern Expedition. That's fine. Continue to beat them, support them, beat them up. We just don't want any reds here. So the Almani War. Give them a little time to leave. I go into. Um, not bad, not bad, not bad. We've done very well, New England. I'm glad we showed up here. Go in. Uh, 
Alert in the Mediterranean. The Grand Prix of French cinema has been awarded to Alert in the Mediterranean. A thriller following the crews of three ships mooring off Tangiers, in particular three commanding officers of the British Republican Navy, the German Casale Marine, and the French Marine Nationale. The relationship is cordial and polite enough, though understandably chilly due to geopolitical considerations, but a fight breaking out between the sailors of the different crews prevent any further fraternization. However, an incident brings them together. The arms traffickers are spotted leaving the harbor, and in their flight have released poison gas. A deadly cloud is slowly drifting towards the passenger ship, and the men put aside their differences to save the civilians, going straight through the gas with little protection. Civilians are rescued and traffickers stopped. Despite their heroism, all the crews lose some men, including the red British officer, and they are buried with full military honors. Directed by the profoundly Catholic director Leo Yonan, filmed at sea with the help of our Navy on real ships and with real sailors as extras, the movie was filled with criticism from some who found distasteful the positive image of the German and British characters, going so far as taxing the movie of pacifism. Against such critics, the director argued that the core message of the picture is one of the Christian fraternity, bravery and camaraderie in the face of adversity, despite eternally rising international tensions. A touching story. Yeah. Mm. We're okay on air for now. Probably more of this stuff. I don't mind maybe getting a little more defense, perhaps. Attrition. I mean, speed's pretty good, too. But when we hold a place, we're going to really have to hold this, this sucker really hard. I want to finish that land auction as well. Necessity. Yes, please. Yes, yes, yes. And roll uh, corporatism because we want those millies and civvies. We need those immediately. We need more planes. We absolutely need more planes. Um, since you're here, do that. Then what? And romanticism. It's not bad. French tradition's not bad. Work with Abbas. Winning over the church. Trans-Saharan Railway. Uh, the German takeover of Morocco has left the remaining West African colonies largely cut off from Algiers by the Sahara. It's caused an inefficient administration, and if we ever invaded it, it would lead to severe supply issues for our soldiers, particularly if we can no longer safely travel the coast. So we must begin the construction of the new railway across the desert, which is true. Uh, we'll keep going with this. I still want to start building up um, some stuff here. You're going to need this too. Um, in my opinion, it's more important to build up Corsica. Uh, you're at the very top still, though. One is fine. Beep. Good. Uh, it's a lot of time still. Whatever could help us out just a little bit more, maybe. And industry. Rubber, fuel, all the good stuff. Empty tank. Eh, just in case it's fine. I know I shouldn't put so much on that, but you know we've only so many arms. We've only so many arms factories, you know. Uh, that's a lot of divisions. You know about though. Good news from the dark heart. A rather interesting set of documents arrived on the best desk of Gene the Third this morning from an anonymous source. Filling their administration with glee. The documents contain leaking or leaked initial police reports about the Congo's forces public on the recent dead body found mauled and predated upon in the jungles outside Leopoldville. This initial report suggests that former General Henri Modecu, the traitorous coward that fled his post and abandoned her struggle for reunification, was the victim in question. Apparently struggling with fevers from his new case of malaria, Modecu was extremely sickly and caught off guard while resting in the wilderness in his makeshift camp, being attacked and consumed by the native predators of the Congo. Whether it be cheetahs, lions, leopards, hyenas, or any other manner of beasts that finally killed him is not yet known, but we do know, however, that the traitors and the generals found no more. Up and again for the supposed hero. Once we take Bangor, they will literally have no more supply. Uh, our finest hour, remember about that, please go ahead. Boop! Nice, good stuff. Now they're out of supply. That's a case, Mountaineers. Uh huh. Infantry is free. Well, let's go with this for now. At the very least. How much already do we have? None. Okay, good to know. So I'm going to add even more on then. 27 is going to be more than enough. I don't engineers as well. And we want empty air. Do we have any empty air at all? 
No, we're not even making any tier. Do we not make any idea? That's a mistake. Well, it's my bad. We have to be making it here. We have to, have to, have to, have to. Uh, trucks, yes. And, okay, we can get some more arty. And, toad artillery, it's 48. It's only 48. Fun. There we go. That'd be nice. Sombra de Mancha. Sombra de Mancha, Gloomy Sun, is a melancholic song telling the sinister story of a spurned lover who commits suicide, addressing from beyond the grave the man who left her. Composed by a Hungarian exile in the commune in 35. Um, the song made its way across the world, first becoming a mainstay of CD concert halls and cabarets before reaching mainstream audiences when it was first recorded in French by the popular singer uh, Damio. In these trying times, it's highly surprising that the peoples of Europe and beyond are prone to melancholy, however. Rumors have been circulating about the song, that it's linked with ever-increasing number of suicides in France, the U U.S., and the composer's homeland Hungary, and that merely listening to the tune could even push the cheeriest individuals towards suicidal ideation. Whether well, this is a fact, a mere urban rumor, or a clever marketing campaign, the song has already been banned on airing on the radio or even being sung publicly in more than a few countries, which only adds to the credibility of rumors about the now infamous Hungarian suicide song. Yay! Here, too, a debate has raged on the question of a potential ban on almost welcome break from the usual political fracas. But is it time for the government to act? Is it? What should we do? Ban the song? Why are we wasting time on this? Dismiss the rumors. Recon is not really worth it, as far as I've been told. Oh, I guess we get armor trains by now. Oh good, they're forcing the defense. How are we doing over here? I really want the car to beat up the CSA, but you know, there's only so much we can do there. Um, you're still getting attacked, which is fine. We need more arty, just tons more arty, and support equipment. Let's buy what we have right now, and go from there. Real corporatism, good. Um, and romanticism. One of the greatest evils of the 19th century was the growth of romanticism in art and literature. A deviant movement, an affront to tradition and the high standards of the classics, though a spread of romanticism went hand in hand with other liberalism. We cannot truly free ourselves without one freeing ourselves from the other. As such, the government must take action to promote true and time-honored forms of art. Infinitely superior to the degenerate movement of the last century. By the way, we're going to grab this one first. Yeah, we'll see that first. I want to see what happens. They just keep trying to beat the crap out of us, becoming an organizer, an uh, infantry leader, a trickster, all this really good stuff. Good, we got better artillery faster and earlier, that's great. Um, I'm going to grab guns ahead of time too. And while it's not great for us, it is what it is, and boom, there you go. Good. Of course, guy needs to be really, really, really built up. How are we doing here? Oh, yeah, you must have them out. Very good. Boop. Nice. I like to make it a circumvent. As much as I don't, I want these guys to win. I really want these guys to lose over here. You know what? Actually, I'm gonna, I'm, hmm, I'll put you north. Cause we'll fight the Reds, maybe. I really want the Reds dead. Anyways, um, colonial extraction. I do want to do just because we get aluminum and rubber and oil, which is stuff we could use immediately. Our colonies contain a vast amount of natural wealth, which is so far largely gone untapped. However. We need trade and investment more than ever, and as such, it's now vital that we look to developing and extracting these valuable resources. Fête du Souverain. Since 1861, the principal de Monaco has had close relations with France. Normally independent, the Italian state relied heavily on France, and most of its flourishing economy depended on French money. Instead, invested or lost in Monte Carlo's casinos, or the two neighbors, eventually agreeing to sign a treaty of protective friendship. Saying neutral in 1914, the Principality eventually found itself in a difficult situation, with the civil war in France and revolution brewing in Italy. As communist militias were closing in on the rock, symbol of rampant capitalism under which the bourgeoisie gambled away the produce of the proletarian's hard work, Albert I chose exile, taking with him the fabulous riches of the Grimaldi family, and setting up a court in exile, before being succeeded by his son in 1922. Louis II has served as an officer in the Foreign Legion, fighting at the Marne and Chemin de Dames, earning himself the nickname of Soldier Prince and a promotion to the rank of General. Since his coronation, 
Louis has been desperately fighting for his un unilaterally annexed principal team. He has found some success extracting recognition of his government in exile from countries opposed to the commune, an admirer of Marshal Patan. The prince has furthermore been funding various right and far right initiatives, steering clear, however, the Action Francais, which has had run a vicious press campaign against the Principality during the Great War. Monaco being smeared as a den of German spies in Jewish capital. But today is a Jewish, okay, Jewish, joyous occasion as a tiny Monagascu community in exile celebrates Sovereign's Day, Monaco's National Day of Falling on the Prince's Patron Saint's, patron saint's Feast. A lavish party has been organized, with many of France's political ex elites and numerous foreign diplomats being assembled in the Prince's Palace on the outskirts of Algiers, an occasion he will no doubt use to further his cause next year in Monaco. Well, hopefully, but we'll see. We're going to need a lot of naval stuff here, too. Screening, capital attack, and positioning. I like that. Less of visibility is not bad. Production costs. I like production costs, too. And positioning. I like to position ourselves. Alright, so what do we got up here? What remains of France is effectively split into two parts. Algeria and Tunisia are isolated from French West Africa by the vast expanse of the Saharan Desert. A journey by foot takes over two months of solid marching. It's unacceptable. For now, we can ship supplies and resources to the Atlantic. This arrangement would be made difficult to impossible if a future enemy were to heavily patrol the Atlantic, or even worse, close the Strait of Gibraltar to our ships. We must not allow anyone to exploit our current condition. If we finish this project, we'll also be able to show the world that France is still on par with the great nations of the globe and is to be respected. Phase 1. Invite investors. Divert railway resources. I wouldn't mind doing this, yeah. I mean, we get well, how much? 2.15 a day, that's pretty good. IEDC. It is 1938, we're getting to 1939. That's good. Come on, take Chicago. I want you to take Chicago so badly. Extend a conscription. For years now, the government shied away from the question of how far we should go in conscripting natives for military service, has intended to alter the status quo in either direction to avoid controversy. However, the hour of liberation is fast approaching, and many would not like to see the matter settled for good. Yes, we would. Can we buy more equipment? Um, do we need any support equipment? We're going to buy these. It's fine. Thank you. Uh, I'm not sure we need more trucks. Actually, ooh, man, my mouse is sucking right now. Anti-air? Oh, we need, we need at least a little bit of anti-air. Do we need more? Yes, we do. Boop. 38, 180. Oh, oh Carlos Spain still hasn't died. Naval bomber, right? Yeah, so I can't say anything to them. Can say anything more than just one spell. Oh, they're fighting a lot of guys up here, aren't they? You're experienced, but still. They're not really fighting the Reds up here too much, the Companions of Joan of Arc. The Companions of Joan of Arc is an association honoring the memory of the patron state of France, uh, canonized in 1920, and in the aftermath of, of the Revolution, founded in 1930 by Maxime Real de Sarta, an artist close to the Action Francais, after the men organized for a relic of the saint to be smuggled out of the commune, the association describes itself as apolitical, simply stating that it seeks to bring together all those of goodwill around those who save France in our hour of need, and who so perfectly embodies our aspirations for the freedom of our nation. And indeed, each year, the patriotic celebrations organized around the shrine built for the relic are more and more popular, with tens of thousands in attendance for a day culminating in the open-air mass, including but numerous uh, parliamentarians, officials, bishops, and intellectuals, veterans and officers, and this year's even Jean III herself. However, despite the association claiming that it seeks to remain apolitical, and the Puchel being revered by the most political spectrum, many seek to use the event to further their political agenda. Both the Action Francais and the Croix de Fieu have repeatedly been caught distrib distributing leaflets, supporters of the two parties sometimes even coming to blows. However, these minor incidents have not hampered the general enthusiasm for the celebrations, and the companions expect even more attendance next year. Saint Jean of France, I hear our prayers, and come Saint France once again. The extent of colonial conscription. With the liberation more and more imminent, we can no longer put out the question of the conscription of colonial subjects. The topic has been deeply contentious, and a final decision on the matter has been aid voided for years in order to avoid criticism from the colonialists, hardliners, and anger from the natives. And now, however, it is not long until all we will 
They really need manpower from the colonies and must contribute the con confront the question on how tight conscription requirements will be. Should Patreon and supporters go easy on them? We don't want to squeeze them too much. If it'll go very easy? Uh, I don't care about the stability. We don't need to squeeze them too much. Mm. Either one. Here. Uh, we're just waiting for all these phases to get done. Up next, we're working on naval stuff, which is good. Air support. Um, air attack. I want air attack. I definitely want more attack. Good job. Eid. Great. So far we're doing okay, but we won't know until we're actually at war, you know. Detroit. Uh, having Detroit would be very nice. Gary. Gary. Alright, you want to help out here? That's funny. Federal government's doing alright. There goes Costa Rica. And expanding up autonomy. <clears throat> it hurts resistance growth speed and construction speed, but gives us quite a bit more compliance, which I do like. <laughs> with the AF now firmly in power, we expand all on our alliances with the far right native parties such as Action Algerian and ensure the loyalty of the traditional native rulers by giving greater local autonomy to local uh, colonial regime regions, empowering local monarchs and integralist politicians with much control over day-to-day -day governance of their lands. And we're in the desert. Very nice. Ox Matos Espangos. Espagnos. To the Spanish martyrs is a poem of dramatist and uh, diplomat Paul Claudel, a deeply conservative, devout Catholic, a longtime critic of the anti clerical Third Republic, who became a sort of official poet of the, of the Pitan regime. His long religious plays earning him unending praise and even Nobel Prize nomination. However, he largely steered clear of politics. His posts as diplomat are demanded strict reserve on these matters. This crisis unfolding in Spain, however, has changed his attitude and prompted him into action, particularly emerging tales of red terror, pro profanations, and active syndicalist violence against Catholic clergy and laity, all ringing eerily familiar to the exiles. Claudel has pleaded with the government to provide unconditional support for the Spanish royalists that he believes are engaged in a holy war against the forces of evil, committees of support towards his cause have already begun to appear, raising funds or organizing volunteers, and engaging in what can only be described as propaganda effort on behalf of the Kingdom of Spain, with often tacit support from the Catholic hier hierarchy. The poem, Ox Matos Espagnos, uh, calls on the reader to stand up against the Red Neros and Diocletians. This reports acts of persecution and exalts a holy Spain that will re be reborn through the blood of the martyrs. It is by now appeared on leaflets, mocked for its rather emotional and verbose prose, endlessly quoted by supporters of the Spanish kingdom, and been quickly translated and spread throughout much of the Catholic world. Paul Claudel has become a sort of figure of the Spanish cause, clearly a cause close and dear to him. Oh, we're going to recall volunteers, thank goodness. I guess an air volunteer here. Oh, I guess there's two more. How about that? Boys, we need you here. Can I send more to the feds? We already have three here, but can you send more now? No. Okay. Very nice. Great Syrian revolt there. This is dangerously weak. But god dang, it's good for XP. All right, so it's happening 1939. It's the year that things are gonna go probably go kaboom. Uh, before we do that, yes. Uh, Y'all need help here. I don't want you to be stretched too thin. Fort Wayne's not bad, I guess. Uh, ah, good. Come on down, guys. We'll make it a party. 40 days left, not bad, not bad. Saudi Omani War. They're just really not having a good time over there. Of course, it goes fine, building up infrastructure, building up all this stuff. We'd absolutely need it though before the war breaks out. Um, more fighters, good. Fuel on the fuel. Well, I don't think so. Fall of Detroit, that's good. And then we're gonna continue this way. And romanticism. I'm going to beeline through all this stuff. French traditions. Well, the many local cultures and traditions of France, from Brittany to Provence and Corsica to Normandy, are each beautiful and unique, and it is the duty of any true Frenchman government to do the utmost to preserve each one. These traditions are under attack each day from the communard tyrants, and it's down to us to liberate us, or liberate every district part of France from the grip. Promoting revivals of local culture among the exiles, and organizing them based on their religion, or region of origin, will galvanize support for the liberation. Uh, do we have trains? We didn't have any yet. Oh well. Even more. We need another one. Let me remind me another city. Marshall Network. 
For months now, rumors of a highly effective network operating in the east of France has reached our intelligence service, but it's proved impossible to get truly a hold of. <coughs> oh, you guys probably won't do this. Um, indeed, it seems that none of the operatives even know the name of the hierarchical superior, and meetings are kept to a strict minimum. But we have finally been contacted by leader Alsatian, Alsatian Textile Industrialist Paul Dungler, nicknamed Commandant Martial, a citizen of the Reich, with a German cash given under the pretenses of funding strict study of the Geneste flower in the hills of the Vosges region. Commandant Martial quickly bought a discipline network gathering information on communist infrastructure and troop movements in the east. Uh, implementing weapons and explosives caches all over the Vosk and in Alsace, creating armored networks in Lorraine as well as stay behind groups should the common advance past the Vosk. However, but unbeknownst to his German patrons, Dungler believes that Alsace is a rival part of France and his network has been gathering an immense wealth of information from within the German intelligence framework as well as cultivating links within the armies of the Reich of the disgruntled Alsatian officers and soldiers. His new offer us his services as a double agent, giving us access to his network to prepare for the liberation of France and would be foolish to refuse. Though the Germans know his network as the Réseau Marshal, to us he will become the Alsace Seventh Column, as deeply Catholic Dungler believes seven is a holy number. However, his attention is obviously divided between the Commune and the Reich, which could hamper the effectiveness of his work against the Reds that he himself calls the anti civilization, which we do. Focus on the Communists for now. Information on the box will always be useful. On these guys for now. The Impossible Hajj. The Hajj is a pilgrimage to the holy city of Mecca established by the Prophet Muhammad. Each year, untold numbers from all the corners of the Ummah undertake this journey to the Hajjaz. Indeed, this pilgrimage is one of the five pillars of Islam, and every faithful with the means to do so is called to visit the holiest of cities at least once. More than a simple trip. Um, this pilgrimage is meant to be a time of spiritual renewal, purification, and equality in front of God for the Mu'min. All over the world, authorities offer their protection to pilgrims, and in France is no exception. Since 1916, the French government is in cooperation with Muslim notables, organized as a hajj of money, giving the opportunity for those who cannot otherwise afford it to fulfill this holy obligation. Established by the secular republic, this involvement in religious affairs could seem peculiar, but passing on this opportunity for France to establish herself as an ally of Muslims would be foolish, as this perception is critical to the stability of the empire. Once an adventure fraught with danger, whether these be natural from caravan raids, the voyage is now much more accessible, or so we thought. With the eruption of war in the Mashriq between the Ottomans and their Arab subjects, undertaking the pilgrimage would be incredibly perilous. Not only the Hajjaz itself is in the midst of deep instability, but the whole of the Levant is teeming with opposing armies, rebel bands, and bandits, the distinction between these groups being more than occasionally difficult to find. Tales of determined pilgrims being robbed, accused of espionage or massacred along the way have already reached us, and so our government has decided not to form an official French caravan this year, instead encouraging the faithful to visit local pilgrimage sites. May next year be peaceful? Probably not. I want us to give us the best chance for us to get as much air speed, so all time operation because we can pre prevent a little bit less op penalties overall. So, uh, that being said, I mean, this is the year of the war, so I'm actually going to divide you a little bit further. I really want these guys for now to be kind of like a Coast Guard force for us. Um, you just never know they're going to naval invade us or whatnot. Oopsie, my bad. Didn't mean to do that. Oopsie. Two, three, there. And hopefully they don't bait us down here. That would be really bad. Uh, we should be okay. Four for now is okay. Should be okay. Could be wrong, because right now we're part of the Anton. That's fine. The way that I expect. I don't plan on going to war with them anytime soon. We should be all fine, maybe except against Liberia. We'll have some rebels spawn here and there. Uh, they're international. Oh, they took part of the weird part of Texas, but not all of Texas. That's strange, but okay, whatever. You lost Fort Wayne. How'd you lose Fort Wayne, guys? It's only Fort Wayne. Um, uh, Battleships organization, yeah, that's, that's pretty darn important. I would say, ooh, we can beat up some reds, yes, please. We can beat them and kill them, please do so. Working on that air XP, or the army XP, I should say. Um, can you actually win here? You might be able to and beat him up. You might not, though. We have any planes here? No, still. It's big sad. I'm not sure why. Eat and romanticism. Oh, the CSA's gone. Look at that. Great job. I'm happy now. Men relations with the Holy See. Uh, I'll do French traditions first, but then what men relations? The last great period of the Moras's role rules AF's estrangement from the Papacy and the Holy See. Although the Church should be one of our greatest allies, and would normally be supportive of a traditionalist and counter-revolutionary monarchy, 
and have long been alienated by Moras' own agnosticism and his view of the church as little more than a politically convenient force, as opposed to the ministry of Christ. We should take measures to end this rift. Six days left. Oh, thank God. God, I hate reds. Unless I'm playing some. Nice. Good. So we're getting there. Uh, 939, construction speed. Build this up, build this up. Very, very important for it to be built up. So they're not fighting the Sacred Union yet. Gary. Good, that's done ahead of time. That's awesome, awesome, awesome. What else are we still out of? Artillery and support equipment. Alright, so we're going to still buy some more. RD 76 is not bad. 123, we'll grab that. Boop, boop. And RD trucks, anti air. Honestly, we're going to need this too. See what you can do. Nice. Good stuff. Alright, so with that in mind, what else do we have right now? We bought plenty of extra trucks, anti air. You, you have to have anti air on you guys. Uh, you guys will have to have anti air as well. But we can't support that yet. So how much are we out? 300 some odd? It's fine. North Africa Cup. Football was introduced to North Africa by the French amateur well, the French amateur clubs made up of colonists and of colonialists colonists and garrison soldiers formed as early as the eighteen nineties. With the Oran Athletic Club, uh, claiming to be the oldest football club in not just Algiers but all of Africa. Slowly indigenous clubs formed, the first being Algiers uh, Mouludia Club in nineteen twenty one. And these days football has become an incredibly popular pastime for me of our citizens. With children playing in every street, stadiums being built, and solid fan bases consolidating around clubs that pop up in every neighborhood. Regrouped in departmental leagues, these amateur clubs participate in a year-long competition, the best eventually competing in the North African Football Cup with clubs from Algeria, Tunisia, and even Morocco. These matches draw huge crowds, occasion to play out in the most friendly manner rivalry between nations, regions between colonists and natives. This latter phenomenon is increasingly worried authorities, who want to avoid it at all costs that Muslim clubs begin incarnating any kind of contestation of colonial order, however, Banning these clubs would simply be making martyrs of them, and so instead the government has opted for a policy of integration, pressuring clubs to field both natives and colonists. A policy that has proven unpopular on both sides, but slowly seems to be bearing fruit. This year, the North Africa Cup final was played between Algiers University Racing and Algiers Gallia Sport, with the university club winning 2-0 after a match, tense match and goals nearly voided by the club's goalkeeper, a young man named Albert Camus. Congratulations to the winners. Time we have no more. Uh, I want chaos. I'm gonna take off these guys. Yeah, take off these guys. Boop, boop. Cause we're gonna need these guys too. How are we doing around here? So they're pushing in really hard against us. Holy cow! All right, so I need you to retreat. Supplies got awful. I want you to sacrifice it. Get out. We cannot afford these types of losses. You're winning there, which is fine. You'll you'll be winning there, maybe, maybe not. Good. Get over. <sighs> That's better. They're forcing the attack, which is kind of insane to think about. Cover, recover, go in. French traditions are nice. Order and reason. Oh, yeah. Above all else, the state must maintain order and decencies in society. And doing so necessitates the use of force. How force, however, is worthless and tyrannical without a higher reason and a higher purpose and guidance. In the integral national uh, doctrine of Moras, we have that purpose, and the Camelot du Roy, and military, we have the force. The kingdom must be accepted by all good Frenchmen, and in exchange for all good Frenchmen, it will enjoy rational and orderly governance. Good, 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 good. Um, so we're building up the radar there, which is very, very important. I also want to build up some more refineries and whatnot, because we need more stuff. So while it's not bad right now, it could be a lot better. I'll push him back over the river. That's important. Can you win here, maybe? What else are we missing? We're buying more stuff. We need more artillery, anti air. Seventy-six. We did that. I mean it's not great stuff, don't get me wrong. 
but it's something. 43. One, 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 one. Uh, I'm not sure why you're selling this because I thought you needed this right now, but that's alright. Whatever. Ah, oh, we got. Ah, oh, we got about this phase two. Hurts us a little bit, but that's all right. These guys, anti-sub stuff. I like the production cost a lot. Critical hits. Naval detection. I'm gonna go with uh, anti-sub and navy focus, maybe. Precision. Screening. Yeah, that's okay too. Let's go anti-sub production. I like better production costs because that's a lot, that's a lot of production costs for naval stuff in general. It's a lot. La Grande Illusion. The Grand Illusion, a war film featuring an all-star cast, has quickly become the most successful and controversial movie within the last few years. Set in a German prison camp during the Great War, the movie follows three French officers, one working-class background, an aristocrat, a nouveau riche, naturalized Polish Jew, and their efforts to escape captivity. The plot's full multiple times, men will never lose hope, promising to each other to meet in Paris once the war is won. The officers, callous, cautiously fraterni fraternize with a German jailer, but never lose sight of the goal, and the aristocrat sacrifices himself to allow his companions to escape. Traveling through the German countryside, eventually being shelled by a widow, one falls in love, or sheltered by a widow. However, his sense of duty forces him to continue his journey back to France, and the officers are finally able to rejoin the fight. The end, however, is ambiguous. A final shot shows an empty table of a Parisian restaurant, as heavy fighting seems to take place outside, leaving the fate of the men yet unknown. The movie, tackling a wide variety of themes such as class, prejudice, patriotism, and duty within, with phenomenal actors and humor, has been a hit. However, its humanistic approach, showcasing sympathetic German characters, as well as characters who consider the war ultimately futile, has been hotly debated, with many accusing the movie of pacifism. A broader reception has been mixed, as the movie was highly censored in Germany. Uh, dismissed as reaction propaganda in the commune, for it seems a class collaboration and showcase of their aristocracy being laudable, tragic figures, but praised in the U.S. and being shown in the White House. In any case, it's become it's a classic. How do the magic go past censors? Nice, we got some veterans here. I like that. Send two. Good. This is actually probably the best area to exploit me. Ooh, it was. Order and reason, yes. Winning over the church. With Auction Francais having greatly consolidated its position as the French government, one last major obstacle remains. The Catholic Church. Although Catholics and conservatives have historically been supportive of French monarchism and the AS rhetoric has favored state Catholicism, relations with the church have been regrettably strained by the fact that Maurras and many other prominent figures in the AF are agnostic. Maurras' support for state Catholicism, meanwhile, comes from his admiration for the church's hierarchy, which he sees as embodying the hierarchies of Latin civilization, and his beliefs that shared Catholicism would help hold France together. This has always been perceived as opportunistic and cynical by the church, and though although the anti-clerical policies of the commune have caused the papacy to restrain itself from openly condemning the AF, the church's little left world government has been greatly reluctant to support us after our coming to power. Of course, this situation must be remedied, something for which we have received three proposals. Many believe that if Moros and others could convert to Catholicism, or announce their earlier disparaging comments about Christianity, the church will be placated. On the other hand, many believe that an offer to defend the church from the cynicalist menace would bring them around. Others, meanwhile, argue that we should simply remind the church of the communist anti-clericalism and support of the state Catholicism, opportunistic or otherwise, to present ourselves as a lesser evil. Evil. We'll have nothing to complain about. Defend the papacy can hardly be refused. Commons be worse than us. Oh, you know what? We'll join him. He's learned a lot while being here. It's great. Carlos has learned, I'm sure, a lot too. We do what we must. <coughs> At least we're not Jewish. Mm, I think we can still probably win here, but still. We need political power, right? Work with Abbas. For some years, the AA. Uh, F has enjoyed support and assistance of the action Algerian, an Al Algerian Arab party inspired by our own movement and ideology. Its leader, Farhat Abbas, is a staunch admirer of Maras and is glad to accept an autonomous Algeria within the Kingdom of France. It is thus obvious that we should reach out to him and his party, integrating them into the government to win favor among the Algerian population. 1939. Got a lot of good stuff here. I want better field hospitals. Good. Um, I'm going to promote you here. I want half of you here already. You know, honesty. Mm, should probably do that too. 
We have marines and whatnot, but they're just they're okay. I haven't built them up to be really strong and whatnot. Three. I want to do a lot of naval battles first. I don't want to get caught with their pants down, really. I want to send them here, but supply problems are going to haunt me, probably. Because I'm sure they'll be stacking a lot of bodies here. That doesn't help us out, out at all, but that's fine. Radio Algea. Although tuning into a radio broadcast is nothing new for countrymen still under the red yoke, of course goes only, after all, a few miles from the mainland. A new station broadcasting from Algiers has been specially created to give true news to the metropole and transmit coded messages to our supporters within the commune, such as instructions and information disguised as private messages um, um, from people separated from their loved ones by the current uh, circumstances. Um, this measure was necessary to coordinate the various actions taken by the opponents of the syndicalist regime, such as the distribution of tracts, preparations to hamper the war effort, recruitment, bribery, or discreet weapons training as tensions ramp up a bit more each day. Though the resistance is still far from being able to rise as one against the communards, establishing this radio station will go a long way towards making sure the efforts of our brothers will not be in vain. Once we land on our shorts, they'll be ready to do all they can to free France. Les Français parlant au français. I hope I'm saying that right. That would suck if I'm not. Because right now we have a decent amount making planes, but we need more rubber too, so I don't mind doing this. Constantine. Um, I still want more. We can build all sorts of stuff, so. How are we doing up here? Are you guys fighting each other too? Oh, you are. Supply is terrible though. Indianapolis, welcome. There you go. Get that experience, boy. Them a ranger too, order and reason, very nice. Look at Abbas, yes, dispersed industry, very good. Uh, fuel gain for oil. Support native elites. The aid of local native rulers is always sustained French colonial rule in Africa. Now, however, the support gives us a perfect opportunity to put Morassa's localist principles into practice. By granting native rulers a greater autonomy and self-rule, conditional, of course, on loyalty to France and contributing to the liberation, we can perfect the practical means of decentralizing the state and strengthen native acceptance of colonial rule. And celebrate Jeanne d'Arc. The symbol of the Republic, Marianne, encapsulates everything wrong with that decrepit state. Depicted in filthy clothes and barely dressed, Marianne represents perfectly the poverty and decadence of Republican France. A preferable alternative to such a filthy idol as Jeanne d'Arc. French hero of the Hundred Years' War and revered saint. By popularizing her heroics, we can promote the AS for the values further, but we'll end it there. Uh, next episode, uh, we're probably going to go to war. So We've been preparing ourselves, I think, pretty decently well. Better than I've had the last time I played this, even though it's been a while. And uh, yeah, we've got quite a few fighters, which is absolutely vital to our war effort. And uh, yeah, if you enjoyed the video, though, please consider leaving a like, subscribe if you're new, check out my Discord link in the description below, and I will see you tomorrow as we are going to attempt to maybe hopefully invade the commune of France. Thanks for watching, and have a great rest of your day.